It's happened again. Something full of nonsense in Scandinavia has happened again. Just a few days ago, we had a physio receiving a yellow card and then a red card for attempting to run on the field before being invited. And now we've got Fish Cake Gate. Uh, Fish Cake Gate uh, 2024. This is a massive, uh, pivotal event that, uh, honestly, I got tagged in. Maybe more than any other event that's ever been tagged in. I don't know what it is about a bunch of Norwegians throwing fish cakes on the field, the protest VAR, that just makes everybody think of me. But quite honestly... I'm flattered. I really, I really am. I'm, I'm completely flattered, and I really, uh, I enjoy the fact that you did think of me in Fish Cake Gate because that's what's happening here. Uh, so you might have remembered that a little while ago, Sweden decided to go to war with VAR. Well, Norway, which is Sweden with a little seasoning, uh, has decided to do the same thing. Now, I, I believe I, w- I want to say this off the top, just, just you know, so that you know that this stuff is stupid. Uh, I think the idea of hating VAR is dumb. I think the actual technology of VAR has the ability to eliminate, you know, a lot of flopping from the game to make sure that we get calls right, to make sure that, you know, red cards and important moments are handled correctly. I think the way that VAR technology is applied is dumb, right? Like the, the, the way that VAR technology is applied, the way that referees handle it the way referees seem to just make up what they believe a handball is and what it isn't what they believe a penalty is and what it isn't right all those sorts of things just seem to be made up on the fly but the technology itself is not the problem the technology itself allows for a lot better officiated game to be played it's just going to take a little while and somebody with a few brain cells to rub together to you know for warmth or something to be able to put rules and structure in place that allow VAR to exist and help the game without hurting the flow of the game. Things like semi-automatic VAR have already been introduced, which can get the game moving 15, 20 seconds after. You can get basically an automatic offside call now. That is fantastic, and it keeps the flow of the game going so you don't get that celebration for two minutes and then the game called back. You know, a, a bunch of the different reasons that people hate on VAR in the first place. But the people that are trying to actually get rid of the technology, Sweden and Norway, right, uh, you, you, stri- they strike me as Luddites. Do you guys know who the Luddites were? Uh, this was a group, uh, this is your Zealand history lesson for the day, so put a seatbelt on. Uh, early 1800s in England, this was a group of people that started to attack burgeoning factories. We're talking right at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. People from the textile industry that started to attack different factory installations in, in England. Basically, they were afraid of the technology. They thought that it was... Uh, producing lower quality goods, contaminant, you know, they had a bunch of different reasons, right, for thinking that that technology sucked and didn't help. But that technology was literally the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, which obviously changed the world and is the reason that we have this, you know, beautiful computer and these apps and all these other things. And, And honestly, the reason we have football, do you really think that football would exist in the state that it does today without the Industrial Revolution? I mean, if we're gonna get really meta about it, a lot of the early clubs were formed around what factories, exactly? I'm just saying, okay? I'm just saying it all grew up around factories in the first place except for the United States, where we decided to start playing the game with our hands. But you know what? We can't always keep the United States under control. We do our best. But seriously, these Luddites were afraid of the new technology, and they they basically they had a bunch of concerns about the way it was being used then, in 1815, and decided to start trying to destroy those factories as a, a form of protest. These sorts of protests strike me in a very similar vein, where the VAR technology is in its infancy. We are currently in... 1815 of the industrial revolution of virtual assistant refereeing right we're already seeing that with the introduction of semi-automated offsides now i am fully aware of the fact that var is applied horribly the reviews for penalties the reviews for handballs the amount of time that they take the huge delay after a goal is scored to know whether it's an actual goal or not all of that shit is stupid it all ruins the game it feels terrible if you were watching a match 10 years ago it would felt a lot more fun than watching it now i mean that's obviously not a one-to-one but the way var has been applied in the first couple of years is not great but you got to have the long-term vision here You got to be able to see down the road, okay? Because VAR 20 years from now is going to make the game 
immeasurably better. We're going to be able to get all of these calls right. We're going to be able to get all of these calls right very quickly. And once we're applying a uniform set of rules when it comes to penalties, then we'll be having the same conversations that we always had about whether something was a penalty or not that existed before VAR, that will exist after VAR. But at least we'll have an understandable set of precedents and laws within the game at that time where you'll be able to point to something and say, well, that was a penalty and this has got to be a penalty because of that precedent and everything. You know, it becomes almost like a legal case. Like we're, we're negotiating something in the Supreme Court. But, I mean, at a certain point, a, a refereeing call is always subjective in that way. But there are so many objective benefits to having VAR and the ability to review all of this stuff. The one that I'm a huge proponent of is trying to erase flopping and using VAR to very quickly update an official if somebody has flopped or not been touched in the head but pretended to have been hit in the head and being able to hand out yellow cards for that sort of stuff. I'm hoping 20 years from now VAR is being used for that too. But, but tr just getting rid of it doesn't give us the opportunity to develop the technology where we're going to get to that point. Now, do I think Sweden and Norway getting rid of VAR... Uh, do I think that that's going to kill VAR in the water? No. Uh, I think all the big leagues are going to keep VAR because, I, 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 I mean, Premier League just voted on this. By the way, the Premier League had a vote on whether to get rid of VAR or not, and they voted to keep it, which, thank goodness, because this would have been a much more angry video if they'd voted to get rid of it. Which I feel, I, feel, I, I feel like I'm risking saying that because I am aware that a lot of people hate VAR. And I want to, again, for the 87th time, be clear that I also hate VAR right now. But I am aware of where VAR is going to go with things like semi-automatic offside, which I know I've already said. But I just want, I need to be very clear here. Because what I don't want to do is, is, is make it seem like I think that VAR is great right now, because it is not. But the protests themselves, they were great. Even though I think the point of them was kind of stupid, they're, they're you're blowing this out of proportion and not necessarily taking the long-term view here. The actual protests were great. So this is a match between Rosenberg and Leostrom in the Elite Sirin in Norway, which is currently right in the middle of its season. Uh, and play was stopped four different times in the first 30 minutes due to protests from both sets of fans. And this was not like a packed stadium. I mean, look at that. They got empty seats here, right? And when you zoom in, on the field here, these apparently are fish cakes, which is why we called this fish cake gate in the first place. These are fish cakes literally on the field. Now, you might not know what a fish cake is, so allow me to educate you. This is from the Twitter account Footy Scran, which usually tracks the food that you can eat at different football matches. But this is what a fish cake looks like. They apparently tossed so many of these on the field in the first couple minutes of the match that the referee had to take both teams off the field. And then later on in the match, they started throwing tennis balls on the field. I'm talking about a lot of tennis balls here, okay? I mean, look at that. I mean, it is raining tennis balls on the field. And the match ended up having to be abandoned. They, they ended up having to abandon the match. There were also flares on the field. They were, they were throwing this sort of stuff on the field and tennis balls and fish cakes. I mean, it was a medley, right? It was an absolute medley going on. Though the, the, I had a couple of, like, obviously, you already know my thoughts about the VAR protests writ large, but a couple of other thoughts on this. One, if I was a fish, okay, if I was a fish and I died, right, and I, was, I, I, I died for the purpose of somebody to eat me, and I was baked into a nice Norwegian fish cake, and I was very excited I was going to end up on some grandma's table and be, you know, I was going to be thoroughly enjoyed. And then some random drunk dude just starts throwing me on a pitch just to be cleaned up by some stadium custodian. I'd be pissed. I sacrificed my entire life to be eaten, to be a nice succulent Chinese meal, you know, of a fish cake, and, and, and all of a sudden I've ended up on the field as part of a protest. I mean, what nonsense is this? That's not what I signed up for, is a fish, right, when I was getting caught. It's just, just absolutely ridiculous. But the other takeaway, a little less introspective, is this match being abandoned. Once you have matches starting to be abandoned because of the the velocity of, of the protests, then you have, a, you have a real problem. And the Norwegian top league now has a real problem. Sweden's already gotten rid of VAR. The Norwegian top league has now had a top flight match abandoned because of dual fan protests against VAR. And I, when I was asking chat repeatedly, I'm like, well, what incident happened that made them really hate VAR? If you're Norwegian, please fill me in. But they couldn't provide one. It was really just a, they hate VAR. 
And part of me just believes that it, it's become like a chic, you know, like the cool kids sort of thing, like the counterculture sort of thing to be like, actually, the game was better before VAR. You know, like that that is part that chic has kind of played up to where, you know, it's it, it's what the popular kids in high school are doing now. And they're, and they're just saying that VAR is no good for the game and that we need to protest against it and try and get it out of our game or, or something. And there's some sort of tidal wave like that that's taking over in, in, in Sweden and Norway, but that I don't know what the Norwegian League is going to do. This feels a lot like the sort of protests that happened in Germany. And those protests in Germany worked. Now, those weren't against VAR. Those were against foreign investment in the leagues. Probably, a, in my opinion, a way better thing to be protesting, right? But they protested hard. They started delaying matches. And I don't remember if a match was ever actually abandoned, but they, you know, they have bringing players off the field and the whole nine yards, the same thing that was happening here. Okay, and, and if these types of protests, they typically work. So VAR might be on the chopping block in Norway as well, which means, you know, is this sort of, this sort of anti-VAR virus spreads, right? Corona 2.0 here. VAR has only got a certain amount of time to figure it out. Now, I believe the technology is good for the game. The application of it is terrible, but they're going to have to turn the application from terrible to like at least okay in order to prevent this sort of thing from spreading. Because if we get a few more seasons of VAR being just generally an ecological disaster, then these sorts of protests are going to hit leagues that are bigger than Norway and leagues that have more sway than Sweden and Norway. Leagues that maybe, you know, you like would be able to start some sort of domino effect through a bunch of smaller leagues to try and start removing VAR, at which point it is possible that these sorts of movements remove VAR from the game. Now, if that happens, I believe it would be something like prohibition in the United States, where for 10 years you couldn't drink in the United States. It literally became illegal to drink in the United States for 10 years. Now, of course, plenty of people drunk anyways, uh, or drank anyways. You know, the bunch of secret bars opened up and everything. Obviously, that wouldn't be happening with VAR. There wouldn't be some, like, fly-by-night bootlegger that was, you know, video reviewing certain plays in a match, as entertaining as that sounds. But I think eventually enough incidents would happen that people would come up with a better plan to bring VAR back after it gets banned in, in different instances like this. But it's interesting to see how this is going to play out. It is. And in the meantime... I gotta try a fish cake. It actually looked pretty good sitting on the grass there.